Hello, welcome back on my YouTube channel. In this video, we are going to interpolate point cloud data. I'm loading the same data from the dunes in the Netherlands as we've used in a previous video. If we zoom in, we can see the individual points of the point cloud that are colored by the RGB colors of an aerial photograph. In the layer styling panel, I can uh, also visualize the elevations by a ramp, which you see here. But these are points and often we need uh, rasters for further analysis. Let's see what tools we have available. I open the processing toolbox and under point cloud conversion I find two export to raster tools. The first one uses IDW, inverse distance weighing, and the second one export to raster using triangulation uses a thin triangulation. Let's first check the IDW interpolator. As an input layer, I use the point cloud and I choose the elevation attribute Z. I can change here the spatial resolution of the pixels and I uh, keep it at the default one meter. The nice thing is I can uh, filter with an expression uh, choosing certain points and I can crop uh, the extent. And here I'm going to crop it to a smaller area just for this demo. And I draw a box in the map canvas uh, to choose a nice area for our demo. After it uh, adds the extent to the dialog, I'm going to save the file to IDW1 for one meter. Later I will try different resolutions and uh, show the effect. After running, close the dialog and let's inspect the result. By default it uses a single band grayscale uh, renderer, but uh, that's not very informative. So in the layer styling panel I'm going to use the hill shade which is much better suited to uh, check the result. We need to put the resampling zoomed into bilinear to avoid the blocky artifacts. And here we have the result. And if I switch on the point cloud layer, I can also see that the geometry nicely uh, fits the original layer. Now I'm going to repeat this for uh, 50 centimeter pixels, 25 centimeter pixels and 10 centimeter pixels and evaluate the result. And now I also want to visualize all the layers with the same hill shape, so I'm going to copy the style, paste it to the other layers. Now let's visually compare the results. I zoom a bit in and we see already that the 10 centimeter result uh, doesn't look very nice. 25 centimeters looks nicer than the 50 centimeters and the 1 meter. So it's all about... Um, how big the pixels are, but if we go to uh, the 10 centimeter, we will see a lot of no data because the algorithm can't find points that are close, which result in no data pixels, uh, which could be interpolated further using the fill no data tool. Because 25 centimeter pixels gave the best results, I'm going to uh, use the same spatial resolution for interpolation using tin or triangulation. In this dialog, I don't need to give the Z uh, attribute. It automatically uh, uses that. And um, I'm going to use the same extent as we used in the 25 centimeter uh, result from IDW. And I save the result to tin025.tiff. And I run the algorithm, which can be a bit slower than the uh, IDW interpolator. So that can be challenging if you have a very large data set. After running, click close. And uh, let's also paste the style there so we have it in the uh, hill shade. And for the zoomed out, I'm also going to use bilinear for both layers, and then we can compare them. We can uh, easily visually compare uh, the layers by switching them on and off, and for different areas and different uh, zoom levels, we see there are some uh, little differences. The IDW uh, result seems to have a bit more artifacts. but uh, the difference is uh, minimal. But the better way of comparing them is uh, using a side-by-side -side map uh, window. And uh, I'm, therefore I'm going to create here the map themes. The first one uh, with only the tin layer I call tin, and here the second one with IDW I call IDW. And with map themes I can easily switch between the two layers. So 
So let's uh, create some more space here. And I'm going to add a new map view, a 2D map view. And I'm going to make it uh, as big as the uh, first map. These maps are now uh, not um, for a specific layer, so I choose Tin on the right side. And then I'm going to synchronize the view with the center of the main map. And I'm going to synchronize uh, the scale. In that way, I can zoom and pan and both uh, windows are linked and I can compare uh, the differences. We can also compare the uh, interpolations using elevation profiles. There under view, you can go to elevation profile and uh, this adds another panel. And I can draw a profile line in the map canvas, click right and it will add the elevation values. But all the lines have the same color, so I'm going to double click and change the color of uh, the line. And I'll do this for all the lines. Let's give the profile some more space by closing the other uh, map view. I can change the y-axis by moving the panel a bit up. I can pan the graph and I can zoom in the graph. And I can switch on and off lines to uh, compare. So here we have the uh, tin 25 centimeters, the IDW 25 centimeters, and the original points of the point cloud. I'm going to change the point size, I want it as a circle, and I use uh, purple. But here it still uses the colors from the point cloud itself, uh, the RGB colors, so I need to uh, uncheck that box, respect layers coloring. And I have my uh, purple dots here, and in this way I can uh, compare the result. And, uh, as you see, it's quite minimal uh, between TIN and IDW, but if I go to the very coarse one meter result the difference is big if i go to the uh, 10 centimeter result you can see that uh, although it fits nice nicer with the points it has uh, gaps so in this video you've learned how to uh, interpolate point clouds to rasters using two methods idw and uh, triangulation and you've learned how to compare the results using multiple 2d views and using a elevation profile